What's up, everybody? Welcome to Brandon's Face. I'm Jonathan Beardsley. And I'm Brandon May. We hope you all had a nice holiday weekend, and we thank you for joining us. I've been looking forward to this week all year because this week we will be talking about our favorite rap albums of the year. And it was an incredible year in rap as far as I'm concerned. Uh, We've started off these past three episodes by comparing this year in the genre to the previous. And so far... I think we settled on EDM being not quite as good this year compared to last, even though we did get some great albums this year. Pop was better from a big name perspective, but not necessarily better from a quality perspective outside of the rise of Latin pop in the States. And in terms of R&B, we had a lot of good, but not a lot of great. Would you say that's accurate? Yeah, I'd say that's right on the money. Rap is the first genre where I can confidently say this year was head and shoulders better than last year. There's artists in our honorable mentions this year that would have been in our top five if this were any other year. And I know it seems like we've said that a lot this year, but it's true. Um, The only downside to this year being as stacked as it is, is the possibility that next year could suffer as a result. (laughs) But we'll get into that in our most anticipated part of the show later on. What did you think of this year, man? Do you agree that it was better than last or possibly even better than the last two or three years in the genre? Yeah, man, we had a very good year for rap music. We had a lot of releases from a lot of like highly anticipated releases, uh, not only for you and I personally, but for like the world. (laughs) <laughs> like it's it's yes. really crazy that we got so many uh so many modern day legends just releasing bangers. So yeah, I would say that this year is leaps and bounds better than last year. Um and that is saying something cuz we even had a great Nas record last year. So we've had multiple great Nas <laughs> records last year. In fact, I wonder if there's already betting opened up on if there's going to be a King's Disease 4 in 2023. <laughs> Um, anything you want to talk about before we get into our actual lists? Uh, not not too much. I do I do want to say though that I think I think we're seeing a little bit of a shift, and I wanted to kind of get your What's perspective that? on this. Yeah. Um, I think that the charts and the Grammys and all of the things that are telling us what to like are not only misleading but they're wrong. I work with a lot of people, and they bump music loud and constantly. I haven't heard anybody bump that Drake record since the week it came out. In fact, they were listening to the plugs I met to the other day. Are you seeing a shift in what is actually popular over these last, Um, uh, over this last year or maybe even two years? I think Drake might be an imperfect example of that because that record is latched to 21 Savage as well, which I think is a reason it's doing anything. And I think that's also the only reason, honestly, Nevermind did anything, which I know is a lot to say that one song tacked on to the end of that album did anything for it. But look at the numbers of every song on that album and look right. at the numbers of the song with 21 Savage at the end. Um, yeah, I feel like there's been a massive shift, not just in hip hop, but in every genre. The household names are so different now. And arguably... The weekend didn't really become a household name until like 2015 around Can't Feel My Face, 2016 Starboy and so on. He's been arguably the biggest like male pop star in the world since then, depending on how you categorize Ed Sheeran. But in terms of like the other stars from that era, Rihanna has not released an album since 2016. Um, Beyonce just released a new album, which is a dance pop record so that is a return in terms of that but in terms of the popularity of the music you know like it it's so weird because it depends on the artist i think that the artists that have been big these last five to six years like the young thugs the 21 savage kodak black i think some of these names are going to start to fall off in the next year or two and be replaced with new names because that's just how this works But I do feel like some of the legends are losing a little bit of their luster. And it's not even just like a broad conversation. I was kind of thinking about this today in terms of like, if I boil this down to like this decade only, who are my favorite rappers based on the material they've released from 2020 on? It's probably Freddie, Amine, and Tyler. And those are not names I would consider to be like the biggest, maybe a Tyler or like necessarily like known as the best amongst everyone. I feel like 
rap is becoming so subgenre, much like rock, that almost everything is niche, which is kind of taking away from like the marketability of it because songs that are getting a billion plays on streaming aren't on the radio anymore. So it's like, what is popular in rap anymore? And what's the what's even the metric for it anymore? Is it streams? Is it radio? Is it money? Like, what do you think is going to happen? Well, I think you kind of hit the nail right on uh, the nail on the head there, because look, when rock was 40 years old, right? Rock music came came out of the gate early 50s. Right. And rock and roll and, you know, all of that became pretty popular. Um, there was radio then. Then it turned mm -hmm. 40 in the early 90s and things started segmenting. And I think that that segmentation was overall good for the genre as a whole. But I think you're right. I think it hurts the marketability for it because you've got um, you've got different things happening and it's hard to market for different things or things that are, people aren't used to. And I, I, I mean, obviously, everybody's been streaming shit for the past 10 years or so now. Right. Um, yeah. Has it been 10 years? I mean, yeah. Been? Yes. Let, let, but let, the let's call it five. Era. Let's call it five. Yeah. Everybody's been streaming for five years now. Yes. Everybody has been able to choose their music now for five years. And I think that I think that it's I think that it's um, I think that it's definitely affecting what is popular um and as it should oh absolutely and <laughs> we shouldn't um, be told what we like no and we kind of were in the radio age right we didn't really have yeah. much of a choice unless we went to a uh an fye and bought a cd or whatever you know and uh rap turned 40 over the last few years and i think we're seeing a major segmentation i think we're seeing a lot less i think we're, i think we saw a lot of trap and i think this year we saw a lot less trap um, I think we're, I think we're seeing some more jazzy beats. I think we're, I mean, shit, didn't, didn't, didn't Denzel put out an, his entire album over, overdubbed with jazz? Like, yes. um, you know, like it's, it's crazy, man. So I, 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 I'm very excited for the underground. Um, and I'd be curious and I hope everybody who is listening to this could Throw their thoughts in the comments. Who's the net? Who's the who should we be looking out for um, as far as as far as rap goes? So that that th those are all my thoughts. I am interested in that. And I know you've been touching on the trap thing as well and kind of the rise or current decline of it. And looking at the current rap Grammy categories, it, it is all over the place. So it's hard to read what is exactly heading. They seem to have hedged this year. Let's look at best rap performance. We have God Did, which is mostly nominated for like a three minute Jay-Z verse. <laughs> we have Vegas by Doja Cat, which is a soundtrack song that is also pop rap. Mm -hmm. We have Hit Kid and Glorilla FNF, a song we didn't cover, but Glorilla is kind of the up and coming it girl in rap right now on par with like how Cardi B or Megan The Stallion would have been a few years before they really hit that top market. Yeah. And then it's Kendrick Lamar, The Heart Part 5, which is obviously critically acclaimed lyrically dense it's it's a very safe nomination and he still is deserving of being one of the best despite me not loving that last album but when you go through there oh and push and peak gonna and future which is trap so there is still a little representation of trap in the critical category but it's mostly pop rap like the future featuring drake and tem song that kept getting nominated is very much more like pop rap than trap so I do think that the commercialization of trap is kind of hitting a saturation point, but we will get back to this later on in our most anticipated, because I have a cool. question for you there that brings this all full circle. All right, let's do it. All right, man. Okay, time for our lists, which other than a few albums in different places are almost identical. <laughs> um, <laughs> the, the, the these were objectively the best rap albums this year, I, I think. I think so, man. One of the only ones that didn't make your list that made mine first is my pick for number seven, which is Kendrick Lamar, Mr. Morale, and the Big Steppers. Again, you did not do seven picks the same way I did, so we could say this might be your seventh. Um, in terms of the album itself, not his best, maybe his worst since Good Kid, but to say that he's lost any of his technical ability or otherwise would be a lie. It's just not the album I was hoping for, but it's definitely one of the best hip hop albums of 2022, all things considered. As flawed as it is, though, I was still surprised to not see it on your list. So why is that? 
Look, man, I loved uh, Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers. It is in my honorable mentions. Uh, and yeah, I uh, look, man, I, I think that it is a beautiful album, but I gauged my list this year based on how many times I kept coming back to the album, not just Savior or sure. N95, you know? And yeah. I, 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 I think that like... Like with Good Kid, right? I, every time I go back and every time I hear anything from Good Kid, I go, "Ah, oh, shit!" Well, now I gotta, now I gotta listen to this whole album. You know, yeah, kind, it's kind of like it's kind of like N95. When I hear that, I'm like, "Oh, well, you know, uh, maybe I, maybe I should listen to it in full." And it feels like an event. I've done it a few times this year, and it feels like an event, and that does kind of turn me off a little bit from revisiting it so often. And the other ones that are on my list, I revisited um, a lot. So, hey, fair enough. Let's get into those. Uh, next up, we have both of our pick for number six, which is Nas King's Disease Three. Um, all three entries in the King's Disease trilogy have been album of the year contenders, with the most recent entry being arguably the best debated online. I don't know how long Nas and Hitboy plan on doing this, but they have not showed any signs of fatigue throughout this four album run together. I'm so happy to see you're still loving this one as much as I am. It's so good, dude. It is. The, Nas is releasing some of his best work 20 years into his career, and I think that should always be applauded. Is it your favorite of the King's Disease trilogy? I don't know, man. I really liked two. I do too. I thought I really about it long to. and hard today. <laughs> I think it goes I, two, three, one for me. I, 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 th I think that's me too, man. King's Disease Two is very good. Very. Good. I, I revisit um, Forty Side quite often. God, he has Lauren Hill on that album. <laughs> it's very Legend. good. Um, this one's great too, though, man. Thirty, thirty is a great one. I love that song. Um, all right, next up, we have both of our pick for number five, which is Vince Staples' "Ramona Park Broke My Heart." I love this album and put it in my top five for a reason, but I feel like this is one of those albums that's going to take years to fully appreciate. It came out during the busiest release time of the year and didn't and didn't get lost in the shuffle, but it feels underappreciated for how great it is. Would you agree? Oh, oh, it's fantastic. Yes, I absolutely agree with that statement. Yeah. Um, so what made this one your number five? Uh, I, I remember really liking it as it happened. Um, and I think that when you look at when you look at Ramona Park uh, compared with his self-titled from last year, we, mm -hmm. we see a major shift. And I and I really liked how versatile he was. And he has always proven to be because he's done a, he's done a lot of versatile stuff. But I really liked that. Um, I really liked the lyricism on this record. I really like the way it isn't overdone. I, I, I think it's just. I think it's great man i think it's a great album yeah i think he knocked it out of the park magic is one of his best like banger hits in a while but i feel like everyone is most surprised by when sparks fly on that album it's like yep. kind of his first down tempo hit and it's arguably the best song on there yep um all right next up we have my pick for number two and your pick for number four which is jid the forever story talk to me about this one I think this is. I think this might be my number five pick. I could be wrong. Maybe I mixed mixed it up. No, uh, that that that's good. I I fucking love this album, man. I listened to it again today. Um, I think I listened to it earlier this week. Um, System M, uh, just get just gets me, man. Uh, he, he did. Jid's just on a roll, man. He did that Tiny Desk concert. Uh, this album is very clearly something he worked very hard on uh surround sound just fucking gets it <laughs> like there are yeah there one of the there songs are, of the year oh easy um the beat switch is the beat switches on this record are how every rapper and every producer in the world should think about how they do it it it, it feels so smooth um and it's funny because I, I listened to uh because our playlist this week i don't know if you I don't know if you realize is rich flex. And then right after that surround sound yep. and um, the beat switch on rich flex is so forced. It, it It's so forced and it's so it awkward. And then you get to surround sound and it's like so easy. Like it, it just 
flows. And I don't know if that's Jid. I don't know if that's the producers he's working on. I, I don't I, I, I don't know, but it fucking works, man. He killed it. I agree, man. Jid has he's always been great, but this year he's finally surpassed a lot of his peers. And it's not the least bit surprising if you've been following his career like we have. This album is incredible, but it really speaks to how great it is that I have no idea where it ranks in his discography. All of his albums could arguably be his best. Like, it's crazy. I'll never forget when I first heard DiCaprio 2. I think it was 2017. And I was just like, who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> like, I don't think it obviously it's not as culturally significant, but I got the same feeling the first time I heard DiCaprio 2 that I got the first time I heard Good Kid, Mad City. Mm -hmm. It is one of those albums. It is that Most impressive definitely. to me on every single level. It, it's technical it is uh and, and and again it just it seems so easy for him it just it just feels yeah. easy and that's that's what i got from the first time i heard uh a kendrick lamar song i was like wow this guy just does it like it it, it seems so effortless and jid is jid is right there with technical proficiency right next to right next to kendrick if you ask me one thousand <laughs> percent um next up we have your number three pick i think i hope and my number four <laughs> pick which is push a tease it's almost dry i i know it's impossible to separate kanye's involvement in this album from the finished product but it's a credit to push a t that it's still ranked so high based on everything he and pharrell did on it it's a good thing he made this album when he did, since he is no longer with good music. <laughs> um, extracurriculars <laughs> aside, this album is easily one of the best to come out and arguably Pusha T's best solo album to date, although I'm personally still Team Daytona when it comes to that argument. Where, where are you? Is this is this the new best? All right. So when we reviewed this, <laughs> I gave this a nine. Oh yes, you need to amend this on air, please. I, I have I have revised my score. It is a ten. It is a no skip. I have come back to this album again and again and again. And as soon as that fucking beat on Brambleton hits, I'm like, all right, fuck, let's fucking go. It's perfect. And it's I'm just, you know, it's just it's it's a good one, man. I I really love this album. It is very good. I agree, man. Um, he did Daytona, all produced by Kanye and Kanye's ghost producers, most likely. And then he does this album co-produced by Pharrell and Kanye. Hopefully the next thing in this chain of albums would be one produced entirely by Pharrell. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. I, I Honestly, man, I... I... Let, let's let's not discuss Kanye too much, but his production skills have proven to be very good. And I think that he did not skimp on those on this album, although Pharrell definitely outshined him. Outshone? He let the outshined. smoker shine the coops. You mean, <laughs> that that is right. exactly what I mean. <laughs> All right, man. Next up, we have your pick for number one and my number three, which is insert drum roll here, producer. Uh, Denzel Curry, Melt My Eyes, See Your Future. Please, please tell me why this is your number one. Uh, I think it, I think it was funny, man. Um, I actually went back and listened to our review uh, of this album, and it was, I mean, I think it was, it, it 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 hit. It was so important at that moment, and I have come back to this album a number of times, uh, probably the most out of all of these albums this year. It is conscious. It is. It is just so well done. Everything from everything from the lyrical content to the immaculate production to the fucking packaging on his physical releases that he's doing. It it is all thematic and it is all. It, it this is a perfect album, bro. I, I keep I keep every time I give something a ten, I go back to it and I'm like, is this really a ten? And <laughs> I. I I gave this a 10 and it was easy and it has not changed at all throughout the year. Full stop. This is a banger of an album from start to fucking finish. And I loved it. Yeah. I've never questioned my score on it. There are times where I like go back to the album just to make sure it's still the same, but it's, <laughs> it's a no skips, man. Oh, it's, it is. it's a perfect album. And in terms of the theme and like the packaging and all of that, I knew this was going to be my favorite era of Denzel Curry. When he brought a fucking X-Wing on stage at Coachella. 
<laughs> um, <laughs> that, that, that X wing gets stuck in my head. That song is all incredible. the time. I love it. Um, I, I had a I had a coworker who was uh, who went to Coachella, and uh, I told him I was I was like uh, he he's big, he was big in rap, and I was I was like, bro, you're gonna go see Denzel. He was like, I don't know, man. This so and so is playing at the same time, and and I was like, all right, man. Well, let me know if you end up doing it. And he sent me a picture of the X wing, and he was like, nobody's here. I'm fucking lit i was like yes man that's awesome love it he had a great time it was fucking sick dude i was like holy shit there's an x-wing on the stage shout out that guy (laughs) Um, man uh dude this this album man it's it's obviously my favorite denzel curry album i think it's easily his best and most complete to date it's it but it's also a work of art that like has catapulted him into the upper echelon of artists in this genre and I don't know how he'll ever top this, but I am very excited to hear him try over the years to come. Right. You know, I, I read I read someone who was very clearly salty at how uh, at, at how many people this album touched say Denzel Curry makes rap for people that don't like rap. Original. And and, and I, I, I was like I was like what the fuck? Are, I'd like did you listen to this album? <laughs> like this is this is incredibly technically proficient when it comes to like just the rapping and the writing. Like yeah, if if their username is like one word and then like eight numbers behind it, never listen to that person, Brandon. <laughs> um, all right, man. Last up, we have my number one pick and your number two pick, which is soul sold separately by freddie gibbs you knew this was going to be my rap album of the year from the moment it was announced yep freddie gibbs doing a casino themed album with a bunch of cameos and features for his major label debut is everything i wanted it to be i don't have anything to say about this album that i didn't say in my glowing review of it back in october but i want to change my favorite song from lobster omelet to dark hearted (laughs) that was a misstep on my part i'm sorry um also he's been doing this since 2004 and has dropped two of the best albums of the decade and three of the best albums of his career back to back to back he hasn't made a strong he hasn't made a bad song or had a bad verse as far back as i can remember like what the fuck else do you want from an artist (laughs) so this is my album of the year he's my rapper of the year tell me why it ranked so highly on your list as well all right so um I listen to extreme metal music often. My wife is not a huge fan of death grind, as is totally understandable. Hold on, hold on, hold so, on. You fall asleep to extreme <laughs> metal music often. <laughs> it's a difference. So what? What I and I also like to purchase physical copies of artists who I really like's work, and so I've purchased a number of very heavy music CDs so I can throw it in my car, and every time I get in the car, I have something. That's uh, that's assaulting my ears. Yeah. Um, I also did purchase a CD of Freddie Gibbs, uh, sold sold separate separately, and I have not removed that CD since I, uh, since I got it. Um, and that's rare because no I cha- I do change <laughs> CDs quite often, man. I haven't I haven't changed that, man. It has been just bumping every time I turn my car on. Um, I I. I it, just a banger is playing, so I don't, I don't, I, I don't know really what else to say, man. It is, it is a beautiful album. I think Dark Hearted is, uh, it, it's, it's, it's beautiful. Dark Hearted started out as a beautiful song with just incredible production, and it's like still somehow growing on me. I don't, I don't know, I don't, I don't really know what man. to say there. It it's is one of uh, his most vulnerable songs ever. And and it's just it's so good, man. It's very good. Like it's it's somehow euphoric and triumphant, but also like really sad. <laughs> it's it's a it's a beautiful song. It's one of my favorites in a few years, man. It's it's incredible. Well, um, and you know, you had introduced me to Freddie Gibbs. I think it was as recently yes. as last year. Um, I think it might have been early last year when you were like, "Bro, you need to, you need to like get on this Freddie Gibbs kick." And so, uh, mm-hmm. last year and this year, before Soul Soul separately came out, I was, I was trying to explore his very vast discography. Like you said, he's been doing this since two thousand and four. Yeah, and. You're fucking right, bro. There's, there's, there, there's, there, I think there's like maybe a handful of skips for me, but like the majority of his discography is just 
immaculate, man. Like it yep. is phenomenal. Pinata is is a is a fucking crazy album, man. Uh, so is uh, so is what, what is it? Alfredo. Oh my god! Like yep. there's there are some absolute gems in his discography, and this is no, no different. This is no different. It was well worth the wait. It was, it was, and it felt like a very long wait for me. Well, man. I, I think it's because he tweeted in November last year. He was like, "I got the album of the year," and then said nothing forever. Like, yeah, uh, like what and the went fuck, away for Freddy? a long time. What the fuck, Freddie? Porter did the same thing to us, just know, in a I different know. way. <laughs> uh, hey guys, album coming out January 2020. It's like March, <laughs> April 2021 when we finally got that one. Right, right. Well, I think uh, I think I don't know I don't know what list you're reading off of, but you did miss my number three. What was your number three? What did I miss? Saba, few good things. I yeah, must have missed that. So so we're going King's Disease Seven. Yep. Is it still Vince Staples or is Jid after it, Nas? Nas, Vince Staples, Jid, Pusha, Saba, Freddie, Denzel for me. Saba, few good things. Okay, so. Talk to me about Saba, Few Good Things. I have that one in my honorable mention, so we can just talk about that now. Yeah, let, 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 let's do it, because it is another one of those albums that I kept coming back to. Um, I remember I didn't know anything about Saba before I put this album on. I think we may have covered like a single, and I, and, and, and I was like, well, you know, we'll see. And it blew me away, man. I forget, the, or no, I remember, not I forget. I was getting work done on my car. Mm-hmm. And I had to take it to the, the 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 car place, and I had to sit for a minute. And I brought my notebook and my my fancy pen and my headphones, and I was like, "I'm going to be here for an hour and a half. Why not bump some new music?" And I threw sob a few good things on, and it blew my fucking mind, man. The level of vulnerability, the storytelling, the the just the 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 delivery it is mm-hmm. definitely my number three for the year um i loved it and i know that i loved it way more than you did but i know you really liked this album what did, do you remember what i gave it i think you gave it a seven or an eight and i think i gave it a nine so i think you re- i think you liked it i think i just gust a little bit <laughs> Dude, I I loved it, man. I did really love it. it. Like I I revisited it for this podcast when I was trying to decide if it would really crack the top list. It just didn't due to what else was released. But this one already feels like a slept on classic. It's excellent. I think this one kind of was affected the same way the Sid one was for me in R and B, and that like the first two singles dropped last fall, so it yeah. felt like an older album, and it came out. Yep really early this year which didn't affect anything but the singles being so old definitely make me associate this album a little bit with last year as well as this year um but it's incredible i love the kind of press release note he released with this album about his thought process behind it and how he hopes people hear it i thought that was very powerful it's excellent man cannot cannot recommend this one enough definitely a top 10 album this year sweet well i'm glad we got top five for you Top five for me. Um, all right, so let's recap. Brandon's list, number seven, Nas, King's Disease, three. Number six, Vince Staples, Ramona Park, Broke My Heart. Number five, Jid, The Forever Story. Number four, Pusha T, It's Almost Dry. Number three, Saba, Few Good Things. Number two, Freddie Gibbs, Soul Sold Separately. And number one, Denzel Curry, Melt My Eyes, See Your Future. My list, number seven, Kendrick Lamar. Number six, Nas. Number five, Vince Staples. Number four, Pusha T. Number three, Denzel Curry. Number two, Jid. Number one, Freddie Gibbs. We do not have a large committee, but that is pretty unanimous, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, man. Uh, the these were, I think, um, I think they were very, very good albums, and objectively, some of the best this year. And uh, yeah, there was uh, there was a couple of other albums that we're going to get into right now that were really hard to shave off. Um, yes. But uh, but I, I I did and I'm very I'm very happy with my top seven hip hop rap albums of the year. I am too. Man. I think we nailed it. Let's uh let's move on to those honorable mentions. We'll just kind of run through these in alphabetical order. We got Benny the Butcher, Tana Talk Four. Was this a hard cut for you? Uh, kind of. I really like this album. <laughs> I did too. Great album. Only so many coke rap albums can make the top five. Though. Right. Exactly. <laughs> 
<laughs> um, buddy, super ghetto. Another solid release from him. Hoochie Mama is an instant classic. Have you gone back to this? <laughs> oh man, I listened to Hoochie Mama like seven times today, man. That, that's just, <laughs> just it's so good. It's so Love good. Love that one. Buddy's oh, awesome. Um, all right, Conway the Machine. God don't make mistakes. This one was one of my hardest. Uh, it's it's my personal favorite Griselda release this year and possibly ever. Um, I think I gave this one a nine, man. Uh, this this was a hard cut for me. I think you gravitated more towards Benny, though, in terms of the Griselda. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. Although although Conway Conway's album was very good. It was on my contenders playlist all year. Yeah, same. Um, Corday from a bird's eye view. I wanted to like this album a lot more than I did. It's not really a contender for album of the year. It's good, not great, but he is still very young, finding his footing, and has kind of acknowledged that this album maybe wasn't what it should have been, and he should have taken a little more time with it. Uh, that said, though, I think he's going to come back very hungry, so I'm excited to hear where he goes from here. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, next up, Danger Mouse and Black Thought, Cheat Codes, another very brutal cut for yeah, you th- i'm this sure this was a very hard cut i think i think i i think it's like and i think i said this during our review but i think it's objective that black thought is the most technically proficient rapper of all time like like yeah. i don't think that i mean i you know like like de la soul might you know might might like might be up there but I, uh, fuck man <laughs> like the, like this dude can rap <laughs> like it I is i remember when I remember when I first added that EP, the uh, Streams of Thought Volume 1, and then we got to that review episode, and I was like, I know it's kind of hard to, like, articulate what it's like to hear the greatest rapper of all time for the first time, <laughs> but what are your thoughts on this? Like, it, it's so hard to wrap your head around. Take everything we said about Freddie's longevity and double it, triple it. That's, right. that's Black Thought, man. <laughs> um, Duckworth, Chrome Bowl. More yes. pop than rap. But who cares? All of his albums are a lot of fun. Fucking love Duckworth. Know you're a big fan as well. Yes, yes. His music is always... I always have fun listening to his music, man. It's really good stuff. I do too. He has been on like a one album a year thing for like four or five years. We should not take that for granted. Enjoy it while he's doing it. Yep. Uh, Joey Badass, 2000. This one gets better with every listen. It's a grower, but it is great. Have you gone back to it? Uh, yeah, once or twice. Uh, I think uh, I, I, you know, it it didn't connect with me as much as I as much as some of the other albums this year did. But uh, I did really like this album, and I think uh, I think you know maybe it's time to revisit it. Yeah, the last time I revisited it, I think I still would put it in like the seven range. But I did find myself enjoying songs that I didn't realize I enjoyed as much the first time around. Yeah. Um. Code of the Friend, Memo. I was a little surprised this one didn't make your list. It made my honorable mentions. It did. And that uh, is <laughs> as good as making the list, really. Uh, album Mode Code, it just always delivers, man. And right. Soho House is a jam. Oh, it, yeah, that's a it's a bop for sure. Yeah, I, I liked this album. But again, we had so much talent this year. Like if Freddie and Push and, and Denzel didn't release this year, then most definitely this would have made my top seven. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> you know, like, it's it's one oh, of those, man. It's one of those. Uh, Lupe Fiasco, Drill Music in Zion. Did this one just not make the cut because the production was a little bit better than the vocals on the album? Uh, you know, in, in fact, I, I was I was just listening to Autobato. Uh, I, that I, song I, annoys me, but it's really good. It I, annoys I, me, though. I, I hated that it, it was his lead single, um, and that actually might be why. I'm a little turned off by the album. I don't know. The drop was just kind of weird for me, but I really, really enjoyed this album. And he is, he is also a very, very technically skilled rapper. So we can't, we can't, uh, we, we, we can't, he had to be on the honorable mentions list. And this one might have made my top 11, 12 maybe, but it would have been at the bottom. Fair. He also paints his own album art. So extra sure points do. for that. He sure did. Uh, <laughs> Smino, love for rent. I just need a little more time with this one, but I am absolutely loving it so far, man. This one fucking rules. Every time I come back to it, I'm like, yeah, man, this is this is good. He has such a weird delivery, but it like bizarre. works. It works. It's, it's bizarre, very good. Yeah. It's very good. 
yeah, he kills it. Um, Stormzy, this is what I mean. Another one that feels as much pop as it does rap, and another one I just need some more time with, but definitely worth the mention. You still enjoying this one? Yeah, man, M- most most definitely. Did this you put is... on Fire Babe during the holidays? <laughs> <laughs> you know I exclusively listen to Frank Sinatra and Cascade during the holidays, bro. <laughs> <laughs> what a double feature. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You know, you you know, I I throw some razzle dazzle in there. You know, the Temptations has a have a banger of a little drummer boy cover. You should play Frank, Frank Sinatra and Cascade at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of an abomination are you trying to do to my stereo, bro? All right, man. Let's move on to something that's the opposite of an abomination. Toby and Guikway moments. Uh, Toby is one of the best rappers from a technical perspective that I've ever heard. And the visuals and choreography are just as masterful as his albums. I hope he continues to get the recognition he deserves. What are you still enjoying about this one besides everything? Uh, Well, number one, he got chameleon air out of retirement. Uh, Number two, (laughs) I love how much this man loves his wife, dude. (laughs) Like More than any other rapper. I love it. Oh, man, this guy is, uh, he has, the word that always comes to mind when I think of Toby in Guique is power. The man has, the man has some powerful delivery and he's yeah. not afraid to use it. He doesn't tone it down. He doesn't, there, there, there's, there, there's like, there's like almost little tact with how he, with how he delivers his rhymes because he mm-hmm. doesn't need tact. He's just going to do it to you. And it's. <laughs> Yes, it's, it's very yeah. good. Moments was a very good album. Yeah, great. I I really hope he gets a Grammy. That would be great for his career. Yeah, and it would be great to see him and his whole family get to celebrate on right. stage. Right, you know all the kids are going to be there. <laughs> um, uh, last one for you, and this one I just kind of threw in here because I know you want to talk about it a little bit. Little Sims, no, thank you. Uh, we have not even reviewed this album yet, but I know we've both heard it. And while it may be too soon to be able to accurately place, it is without a doubt one of the best rap albums to come out this year. Correct. Any thoughts on this one? You know, I'm still sitting with it. I'm still listening to it. Um, I uh, I did put that on the back burner to listen to the majority of our list plus the honorable mentions. But uh, man, I really really enjoyed that album, and I think that it's uh, I think that it would be remiss of us to not at least talk about it so i'm glad we are it's a yeah. it's a really good album the production is really good everything is dude it's incredible everything, everything's on purpose <laughs> it it was such a like random drop i think we fucked up by not covering her album last year sometimes i might be an introvert i feel like we fucked up by not getting that one yeah maybe we'll get around to it another time but she is clearly an artist to watch yeah yeah mo- most most definitely man i think she'll probably have a really good year next year I agree. Um, that's it for the honorable mentions. In terms of worst of, we we talked about all of these artists last week, so we don't need to talk about them again. But it's Jack Harlow, Post Malone, Drake <laughs> twice, to name a few. <laughs> Drake twice. <laughs> um, but it, it's honestly not a surprise that almost every bad rap album we heard this year came from an artist that could be considered a pop star as much as a rapper, even though that's the vehicle that they're currently using. I suspect we'll have a few big names on our worst of next year and maybe even some of these same names we're talking about now, but I'm still hoping for the best. But what will be your expectation if any of these artists announce a new album? Will you still go into it with an open mind or just cautiously optimistic? Look, man, I go into every Drake project with an open mind. I go into everything that I possibly can with an open mind. And I honestly really wanted to like Jack Harlow's album. Um, I mean, i I, I I like I really wanted to, but it was God, it was fucking boring. Um, yeah, really bad. Of course, of course, I'm gonna go into everything with an open mind. I really hope that Drake makes makes something new that is good and not bad. Um, and yeah, man, I mean, we'll, we'll we will see what happens. <laughs> yeah, uh, like I said, I'm hoping for the best. There's songs I like from all of the artists that I just mentioned that. So it's not impossible for them to release something that I enjoy. Just the stars have to align just right. We'll see what happens with that (laughs) next year. Speaking of next year, let's move on to our most anticipated rap albums for 2023. 
which is kind of tough to do since there is nothing really announced yet in terms of rap. But we can try and speculate a little bit based on how often some artists usually release new albums. And I will go first to give you a little time to think of any if you have any to mention. My list feels a little greedy since they've all (laughs) dropped recent classics, but I wouldn't be surprised if we get new albums from Amine, Tyler, or Dave next year. I would love to see Tierra Wack release another album. I would also love to see Childish Gambino return to the genre in a larger capacity. (laughs) Some of these things might happen. Some of these other things will definitely not, but those are my hopes for 2023. What are yours? Who do you want to see release a new album next year? Uh, It's funny. You said Dave. Dave. I would like to see Dave release another album. Yes. Um, I would uh, would like to see Baby Keem release another album. And I would like. I think to see... that's going to happen. Nice. And I would like to see Run the Jewels release another album. Ooh. Do you think we're going to get a Killer Mike solo album before we get a Run the Jewels album? Maybe. I mean, it's possible. Uh, the dude. The dude likes to work. Yeah. I mean, he hadn't put out solo music in ten years until those two singles this year. And then kind of went quiet after no like album announcement. But I I think that's going somewhere. I think it is. Yeah, it's possible. It is possible. But I would love new music from Killer Mike, LP, or them together as Run the Jewels. So so here's an artist that we uh, don't talk about um, that I know will release at least one album next year. Um, I wonder judging, if it's the same judging, one I'm thinking ju- about. Judging by uh, his, his release uh, calendar this year, which we reviewed none of. <clears throat> I've, I've been hearing the word prolific be spouted about this artist, and I'm not sure I can really wrap my head about him. Uh, Never Broke Again, Young Boy, which is a fucking god-awful name. <laughs> <laughs> so but, he is on What's Your Name by Tyler on Call Me If You is. Get Lost, which yes. I think is the only song of his I know. But I don't hate that song. He must be the guy that's more singing at the end of it than rapping. Oh, he's but, a rapper for sure. But yes, that's, I'm just saying the only sample of his music I'm very familiar with, he's singing. He's not really <laughs> rapping on it. Um, so I I don't know. His numbers are insane. That guy has Absolutely a huge insane. following. He does very big on YouTube in terms of trending. Uh, but no, man, if he, if he releases a new album, I'm down to cover it. Yeah. Um, I mean, just, ju- just this year he has released... One, two, hold on, got to scroll down here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight albums slash did he get on your Did he get on your radar from Reddit or from like people in your life telling you about him or playing his music? He is 317th in the world. He's got 16 million monthly <laughs> listeners uh, from Reddit, um, which is where I spend. It's the only social media I have, so I'm, 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 I'm on it quite a bit every time I get a sure. breather and want to and want to just get vacuumed into my phone that's where i go um also to fight with people about drake and um and yeah man uh i mean of course that's what you do um but yeah it's uh it, it's funny I, I i have like tried to like give his music a little bit of a shot every like i think i had 15 minutes the other day and or uh like a few months ago and and decided to throw it on and just to like see what the hype was all about. Because it's not like I've just recently heard of him. I've been hearing about him, obviously, on mm-hmm. the internet. But like, it, and, and I think I, I, I remember he did a he did a he did a track with the baby back when I was like loving loving the baby, which was I think a year ago or two, maybe two years ago now. Um, and yeah, mm-hmm. I, I, I don't I don't see prolific being the word but i see a lot of releases and uh clearly a lot of heart and clearly a lot of um a lot of passion in what he does so maybe maybe let's give it a shot is that who you were thinking of when i brought this up no um who were you thinking but of? no uh before we move on to who i was thinking of nobody should use the word prolific and rap unless you're talking about nipsey hustle um, that is <laughs> kind of a rule uh yeah he, that's, that's, He's not a celebrity, bro. He first <laughs> off, he's a crit. All right, <laughs> that video right, always man. gets me. I love it, man. Um, <laughs> no, so it's funny you say that because we usually don't think outside of our personal taste when looking ahead. But it appears 
the new Travis Scott album, Utopia, will finally be dropping sometime <laughs> next year. You were talking about the popularity of Trap. What's your temperature on that, and how do you think it will do in terms of commercial reception? Do you think his fans have gone anywhere? I, I think his fans give zero fucks about what happened. I mean, I let, let, the only people I've seen complaining about what happened was people who don't listen to Travis Scott, hate the Kardashians, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we've got a lot of keyboard warriors out there. And he did that Charlemagne interview, which I did watch. Um, and I'll be I'll be real with you, bro. I didn't hate Astro World. Um, all of that being said, I didn't love Astro World. I think it's going to do. I think it's going to do numbers. There's no way it doesn't do numbers. I think that what happened at Astro World was obviously a tragedy. And I think that all of his fans also know that. But they also go into it expecting some sort of chaos. And unfortunately, they got it. And that's kind of like the point for his mm-hmm. live shows. You know, it's kind of like it, it's I mean, it's if, if I'm going to if I'm going to go see uh, if I'm going to go see Cannibal Corpse and I get in the pit and, and I get fucking elbowed in the face am i gonna cry about it you know i'm, I'm not i'm not no. gonna right the it, only it's... difference is at a cannibal corp show if an ambulance was coming to try and help you after you got punched in the face <laughs> they would probably let the ambulance get to you oh most definitely and again i'm not trying to downplay <laughs> those events those events were, were legitimately tragic oh i'm just talking about um, the difference in fans oh but oh, yes. oh mo- 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 most definitely um yeah, it's it's one of those things where I think he's definitely going to do numbers. I think we should I think we should probably review it next year, man. Oh, we're going to review it. If it comes out next year, will that be the biggest album rap album from a numbers perspective? I think right off the right off the jump without knowing who's going to. If Run the Jewels does it, I think Run the Oh, well, actually no, Run the Jewels isn't even as popular as Travis Scott is. So oh no, not even close. Not even no. close. So, no, yeah, I think it will, probably would be. Like there there's there's almost no doubt about it. It would have um, to be like 21 Savage or somebody else to like really hit those same metrics that he's hitting. Right. If you look at the the total number of streams on Astro World and trying to add that up, it's no pun intended. Astronomical, dude. It's <laughs> insane. It's just ridiculous. <laughs> oh, that pun was fucking intended. Don't, don't. Oh, that's fucking hilarious. It, it was intended, but I did not plan it. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. There you go. There you go. Pun not it's planned. Astronomical. I didn't hate Astro World, man. I thought it. I thought it was a. I thought it was an interesting album. I thought it was. I thought the production was very good. I. I I think that the beat switch and on uh, sicko mode is fucking annoying um, because you know, my favorite song on there. Uh, What coffee bean, the last song on it. Very weird down tempo song. Love that song. Probably my favorite Travis Scott song. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. It's, it's, it's uh, I think I actually like the opener star stargazing. It's a, it's a good opener. Uh, I think that's the opener. You love you some songs about booger sugar brand. (laughs) You know, it just is what it is. Just is what it is, man. Well, I, I, I think uh, I think I think I'm willing to open up my mind a little bit to some of the more popular things. I think that uh, maybe we should have reviewed at least one of the Young Boy albums this year. You know, um, probably. And uh, and you know, looking 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 forward, I, I want to uh, I want to open up my palate a little bit with a, a little bit more of the most popular things. But I also want to really get into the underground of hip hop. I think that's where genres shine. And I think that's really where genres shine when there is segmenting of, of sub genres, like we're currently seeing with it. Um, and like we had talked about earlier, we're, we're, we're seeing it, right? There's so many different things happening in, in rap right now that it's hard to pay attention to the, to any one thing at a time. And it's yeah. kind of like, I mean, the mid nineties for rock music was fucking insane, right? Like, like there were so many things <laughs> happening. We had, we had death metal across the world. We had pop punk. We had punk music changing we had g- general rock and roll changing we had goth you just music nailed happening. it everything was changing which is why it felt so crazy which means this whole influx of new music we're getting and the uncertainty we feel in who is the biggest star that's because everything's changing right now which is yeah. why i'm so excited for next year and to keep doing this podcast on a weekly basis because now we get to see the change in real time in a way that i never noticed before and it's shocking how fast it happens. 
Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think we're really, I think we're really going to see something neat the ne- next year and I, I want to see it. I want to see it from the ground up. I want to see, you know, like, um, God, you know, the, like, I don't know. I, I feel like, I feel like things are changing and I'm excited for it. That's, that, that's really, that's really all I got to say, I guess. You heard it here. We will be reviewing only artists on Tech Nine's label next year <laughs> to be as thoroughly underground as possible. Um, <laughs> all right, man. That's it for us. Thank you all for joining us. We will be back next week to finish our album of the year series by sharing our favorite rock albums of the year. We have saved the best for last because rock was by far the most stacked genre for us this year. And I am excited to get into it. I know you are as well. We hope you all have a happy and safe New Year's. If you're having a party, play some Channel Tress and SG Lewis. Don't drink and drive. We'll see you all next week. Peace. Peace.